in stores now. Hello! No! I'm on a boat in Holland! In Holland! <laughs> yeah. In case you didn't hear him, he's on a boat in Holland. He's loud, he's rude, and you probably see people like this every day. A new poll shows only 20% of Canadians think other people have good cell phone manners. But get this, 94% of those same people think they themselves have perfect public phone behavior. So are we just lying to ourselves? Kina Khan is a psychotherapist and social behavior expert. She's live in our studio with some tips on what she calls proper techno behavior. It's good to have you here. Thank you very much. So there's this huge disconnect then about how we think we're behaving on our cell phones and how others think we are. Well, that's right. And this disconnect was highlighted by a survey that Chatter Wireless did with Ipsos Read to see how Canadians feel about mobile phone technology. And you're right. Many of us think we're fantastic. We've got it all. We're doing great etiquette. We're speaking professionally and properly in public spaces. But we think that only 20% of other Canadians are. And the most frustrating, that the, the most frustrating thing is um, dropped calls. Yeah. It, it, tell us more about that. People get upset when they drop oh. a call. Tears and tantrums, Marcy. For dropping a call? Well, I mean, it's, it's understandable because many of us have very important phone calls. We're doing business. We're having our intimate relationships. We're, you know, making really important connections on the phone. So we're using them in different ways now. I mean, as a therapist, I have some of my clients that I have phone sessions with. So a dropped call can be very frustrating, but it certainly is leading to phone rage. But one tip is that the person that originated the call is the one to call back. So that you're not dealing with busy signals and getting more frustrated. Okay, good. And you also have an eight-foot rule. What's that about? Well, that's if you're in public. And if it's possible to, be, to give at least eight feet between you and other people so they don't have to listen in on your conversation. Some people are loud regardless, though, you know. Whether you know they're what? eight feet away, ten feet away, fifty feet, you're going to hear them. It's so true, Marcy. They don't realize that these microphones are really sensitive. No need to shout. There really isn't a need to shout. And everybody else doesn't want to know what you're talking about. They're not as interested as you are. Uh, what about texting? Because yeah. now we've got texting and walking, uh, texting and movie theater, all this stuff going on. What, what are your rules when it comes to that? Okay, well, when it comes to movie theaters, definitely if the lights are dim, the phone should be off. And even if it's texting, I think people think, think they can get away with it if it's texting. Marcy, yeah. you admit it. I talked about yes, this earlier. Yes. Yeah, because you think, oh, I'm texting. I'm not making any noise, but that light, right? The light is bright. And you have to understand that you're um, impinging on somebody else's experience of a movie or a live show. So you don't want to do that. But also, sometimes when we text, we want a response back immediately. Yeah. And really, the general rule of thumb is you have to wait four to five hours. Four to five hours? Four to five hours before following up on that text. Frankly, if you're texting me, it takes me four to five hours just to respond because I'm not very good at it. But I think that we want to give people an opportunity to, to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're busy. Maybe they forgot their phone. Maybe they're in meetings. And you don't want to send a barrage of texts following up on the original text that you had sent. So give people a chance to get back to you. Some good tips. I'll try and improve my behavior. Thanks for coming yeah. in. Thank you, Marcia. Uh, coming up on Canada AM in 15 minutes, Angelina Secrets will ask the author of a new tell-all book about what Angelina Jolie doesn't want you to know. And in 20.